Evening. I'm here tonight to announce my intention to seek the Republican nomination for President of the United States. I'm sure that each of us has seen our country from a number of viewpoints, depending on where we've lived and what we've done. For me, it's been as a boy growing up in several small towns in Illinois, as a young man in Iowa trying to get a start in the years of the Great Depression, and later in California for most of my adult life. I've seen America from the stadium press box as a sportscaster, as an actor, officer of my labor union, soldier, office holder, and uh, as both Democrat and Republican. I've lived in an America where those who often had too little to eat outnumbered those who had enough. There have been four wars in my lifetime, and I've seen our country face financial ruin in the Depression. I've also seen the great strength of this nation as it pulled itself up from that ruin to become the dominant force in the world. To me, our country is a living, breathing presence, unimpressed by what others say is impossible, proud of its own success, generous, yes, and naive, sometimes wrong, never mean, and always impatient to provide a better life for its people in a framework of a basic fairness and freedom. You know, someone once said that the difference between an American and any other kind of person is that an American lives in anticipation of the future because he knows it'll be a great place. Other people fear the future as just a repetition of past failures. Well, there's a lot of truth in that. If there's one thing we're sure of, it is that history need not be relived, that nothing is impossible, and that man is capable of improving his circumstances beyond what we're told is fact. Now, there are those in our land today, however, who would have us believe that the United States, like other great civilizations of the past, has reached the zenith of its power, that we're weak and fearful, reduced to bickering with each other, and no longer possessed of the will to cope with our problems. Much of this talk has come from leaders who claim that our problems are too difficult to handle. We're supposed to meekly accept their failures as the most which can humanly be done. They tell us we must learn to live with less and teach our children that their lives will be less full and prosperous than ours have been. That the America of the coming years will be a place where, because of our past excesses, it will be impossible to dream and make those dreams come true. I don't believe that. And I don't believe you do either. That's why I'm seeking the presidency. I cannot and will not stand by and see this great country destroy itself.